Daisies and welcome back to Reading Club. So today I'm going to read you Daisy and the Trouble with Sports Day, Chapter 9 and Chapter 10. Chapter 9. When we came out of school on Friday, Gabby and me had decided to completely ignore Jack Beachesel. Even if he did Usain Bolt points at us. Trouble is, as soon as we got outside the school gates, he caught us up. And this time, he was eating chewing gum. The trouble with eating chewing gum is it's the most unallowed thing you can do in school. Or rather, can't do in school. Even Jack Beasel wouldn't eat chewing gum inside actual school. Which is why he'd waited till he got just outside the school gates before he had started chewing. When he came up to us, I forgot I was meant to be ignoring him. I told him that if I ever saw him eating chewing gum even a millimeter inside the school gates, I would tell Mrs. Peters, the dinner ladies, and Mr. Cupford that he had brought chewing gum into school. Jack said he didn't care because he'd swallow it before they caught him. Then he told us it wasn't ordinary chewing gum either. It was new sports chewing gum. When I asked Gabby if new sports chewing gum would help his legs run faster, she said she didn't know, which meant it might, which made me want to scream. I mean, not only did Jack Beatrice have new trainers to make him go faster and a new headband to make him go faster and new wristbands to make him go faster, now he had new sports chewing gum to help him go faster too. It was so unfair. When Gabby asked Jack to show her the po packet, he said he wouldn't because new sports chewing gum was for proper athletes only, not losers. I said I'd rather be a loser than a poozer, which made Gabby really laugh and Harry Bayless. It even made Jack stop chewing. Then before he had time to think of a new name to call me back, Mom turned up to collect me so he couldn't call me anything or even do what Usain Bolt point at me. All he could do was frown. Because my mom was there. He did open his mouth really wide so I could see all of us chewed up chewing gum though. Honestly, that boy is so childish. On our way home with mom, Gabby told me that losing wasn't in her vocabulary and it shouldn't be in mine either. She said that if we used my go for gold training and eating plan to train our very hardest at the weekend, then she was absolutely sure we would be able to win our different sports day races without the help of new trainers, new headbands, new wristbands, or anything. So that's what we decided to do. We decided we would help each other train and train and train all weekend. I would help her to get brilliant at sprinting, and she would help me to get brilliant at egg and spooning, provided I could get some more eggs. The trouble with getting some more eggs is if you've already broken 12 in training, your mom might not want to buy you anymore for a while, even if you keep telling her that you really fancy an omelet. I told my mom that I fancied an omelet about seven times on the way home from school. She kept pretending not to hear me or even see me. Gabby said that she might be able to get me some eggs from her house, but that if she asked for boiled eggs for tea on a Friday, it might look a bit suspicious. Gabby always has fish and chips for tea on Fridays, and her mom and dad know the fish and chips is her favorite. Then she told me that if she asked for boiled eggs for breakfast on Saturday morning instead of Friday evening, then it wouldn't look suspicious at all unless she asked for too many. I said that if I, I said if boiled eggs are impossible to break, then I would only need one or two. So that's what we decided to do. On Saturday morning, we would meet up again. Gabby would bring the eggs, and I would bring the spoon at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. Our Gopher Gold Olympic training would really begin. And not in my back garden, either. 
on the pavement outside my house. Chapter 10. When I woke up on Saturday morning, I got dressed really quickly, put my trainers on really quickly, ate my Weetabix really quickly, washed my face really quickly, cleaned my teeth really quickly, and then waited outside by my front hedge, hoping that Gabby would arrive really quickly. When she did, not only did she have two hard-boiled eggs for me to train with, she had brought a sports whistle for us to blow, too. It was exactly the same as Mr. Copford's whistle, except it was made of yellow plastic. It didn't have a string, and instead of coming from a sports shop, it had come out of a Christmas cracker. When I showed her what I had brought, she was just as pleased with me. I had brought the spoons. I had brought a patch writer PBs on, plus... I'd even remember to bring a piece of chalk. Chalk is the most important thing you can get in athlete. Athletics, because without chalk, you can't see where a race starts and where it finishes. After we'd drawn a big white start line on the pavement outside my house, Gabby told me that if we did 60 whooping strides up the road, we could work out where the finish line should go. So that's what we did. We did 60 whooping strides all the way up the pavement, counting as we went, past Dylan's house and almost nearly right up to the top of the road. Once our running track was absolutely ready, we started to jump up and down and shake our legs like proper athletes do. Then I got our gopher gold exercise and training plan out of my pocket. The trouble with a hundred sit-ups is they really hurt your tummy so we only did three of those the trouble with a hundred push-ups press-ups is they really make your arms ache even if you stick your bottom right up into the air so we only did one of those the trouble with the hundred running on the spots is we had already done a load of running on the spots in rehearsals on monday so we only did about seven of those. The trouble with doing all the other things on our exercise plan was everything we tried left us more and more out of pep. Plus, I was busting to have a go with a hard-boiled egg. So I decided to go straight to the racing mitt instead. When I put my first hard-boiled egg on my spoon, I was so excited I could have burst. Gabby said that once I was standing with my feet behind the start line, she would run up to the finish line, blow the whistle, and then start counting straight away. Trouble is, then she did a really loud practice whistle when I wasn't ready, which made me drop my first ever hard-boiled egg on the pavement. The trouble with dropping your first ever hard-boiled egg on the pavement is you hardly dare open your eyes in case it's smashed all over the pavement. But it hadn't. Even though the shell was crunched a little bit, no runny stuff had come out at all, which meant I could just pull it straight back onto my spoon. These are the PBs I did when I started my proper 60 meter egg and spoon training with Gabby. PB1, whitey brown egg, 46 counts, seven drops. PB2, white brown egg, 45, and a bit. Counts. Six drops. PB3. Whitey brown egg. 44 counts. Five drops. PB4. Whitey brown egg. 43 and a bit. Counts. Five drops. PB5. Whitey brown egg. 41 counts. Two drops. PB6, whitey brown egg, 40 and 2. Smidgy bits counts, 2 drops. PB7, whitey brown egg, 40 and a weensy smidge counts, 2 drops. PB8, whitey brown egg, 39 and 3 quarter counts, nearly only, 2 drops. PB9, brownie white egg. 39 and a half counts, two drops.
PB10, brownie white egg, 30 egg counts, one drop. PB11, brownie white egg, 37 and a half counts, one drop. PB12, brownie white egg, 37 and a quarter counts, one drop. PB13, brownie white egg, 36 counts, one drop. And these are the sprinting PBs that Gabby did when it was my turn to have a blow of the whistle. PB1, 16 counts. PB2, 15 and 3 bits counts. PB3, 15 and a half counts. PB4, 15 and a titchy bit counts. PB5, 14 and 3 quarter counts. PB6, 14 and a weensy titch counts. PB7, 14 counts. PB8, 13 and a whittly bitly bit counts. PB9, nearly 13 counts. After we'd been training for about an hour, Gabby said that I was definitely getting better at running with an egg and a spoon. And that once I had learned to go the whole 60 meters without my egg dropping off at all, I would totally be able to beat Lottie and Dottie. When I did my 14th PB, I actually did manage to run the whole 60 meters without my egg falling off my spoon at all. Even better, Dylan saw me do it. Dylan is a boy who lives in my street. He's two years older than me, plus he plays guitar, which means he's really cool. Dylan said he had heard us blowing our whistle and had come out to see what we were doing. When he found out that we were going for gold, he was really impressed. When he found out that we had a go for gold exercise and training plan, plus a go for gold eating plan, as well as a whistle, things got even better. Because then he offered to be our sports phys physiologist for nothing. Dylan said that sports physiologists can, make, can take athletes to a whole new level. And that if he wanted, he could he would give us a demonstration of how to do it. Gabby said that she definitely wanted to move to a whole new level, and I did too. So Dylan went back into his house to get his skateboard. So that's the end of this channel. I hope you enjoyed my readings of it, and if you did, please click many likes and subscribe reading club. I'll come back later with a new and improved channel. Bye everybody!